but it's it's perfectly fine. Um, it's the it's it's the benchmark. You don't want to go below thirty, right? I use sixty because I have a computer that can compress it well enough, and I have internet to push it through, right? Um, yeah, so that's why I say that. Next question. I keep thinking that this is the last question that somebody else sends in another question. How much does the Avermedia Live capture help with streaming? Okay. Um, I'm currently running 6 gigs of RAM with a 560Ti and an i5-3570K. All right, so that's a good setup. OC to 4 gigahertz. Very nice. 2200 KBS. Great. Quality set to 720 at 45 FPS. Perfect. Seems to be somewhat pushing it on my computer, especially since I have uh, to lower some settings a bit when I stream certain games. Would I be able to stream at 60 or maybe even 1080 if I get the Avermedia card? The Avermedia card in a single PC setup doesn't really, to my knowledge, do anything for you uh, when live streaming. If you're locally recording, yes but when you're live streaming i don't think it does a hell of a lot for you you can live stream from avermedia software i think and then that's a whole different bag um that's something that again i'm not incredible if Zyza is still here he'd be more likely to help you out with it than i would because he'll know avermedia the avermedia card in a single pc use more than i would i only use the avermedia card as a pass-through for consoles and a pass through as my gaming computer. But to my knowledge, it's not going to make an enormous difference, I don't think. Um, yeah. I wouldn't bother with it unless you plan on using it as a pass through for a console or you plan on putting it in a or buying a new computer soon and keeping the, your current computer and using it as a streaming computer. Um, I don't think it's going to make a humongous difference for you. Your, your big thing is, I mean, honestly, 720p at 45 FPS is fine. If you're getting a lot of lag, if you're getting frames and stuff issues when not streaming as well, then it's likely your graphics card, right? Yeah, that's what I thought, Zyze. So there you go. There is your answer. There is your answer. That's what I figured. So, you know, Avermedia's card excels as a pass-through uh, or as a local recording piece. Um, but OBS does pretty much all of that shit for you anyway. <laughs> at, the same, at the same clip for the most part. So there you go. Endless questions. <laughs> I'm teaching everybody how to stream today. That's my. Oh, okay. Thankfully, Zyze is here for moral support for some of the stuff that I am not well versed in because I haven't done. Mr. Narat asks me two things. What do you do when you start streaming? <laughs> and a super popular guy who you happen to be a mod for start streaming because he's a jerk. I mean you. <laughs> uh, you suck it up and do your damn job! Oh, I love you. Uh, on a more serious note, I'm debating uh, to do a regular show type thing about games. Uh, would I be better off doing it on YouTube, where I supposedly get ad revenue? Or Twitch, where I'm not yet partnered, or both? Um, I suggest that you do both. I suggest that you, if you're going to do it weekly, and it's going to be a scheduled thing. Uh, people like people are creatures of habit. If they if they find you and they watch you and they th they enjoyed it, they're going to want to watch that in the exact same time each and every week, right? So do it on a live stream, all right. And then from the live stream, highlight that and send it off to YouTube at the same time every week, okay? And do it that way for a show. That's the best way to do it. If you need to add certain things to it, or you need to like add other things for YouTube, then you can stream and record at the same time. 
do your editing for YouTube with your recorded file, highlight it anyway on Twitch for people to come back and watch later, and then upload your final stuff for YouTube uh, that you do after you edit the local recording stuff. That would be my suggestion for you, sir. That would be how I would tackle that. Frenchie asks, what you want for Christmas? Yeah, what do you want? Natalie doesn't even know what I want for Christmas. Uh, I want you to continue to be a badass that highlights all of my stuff and makes my life easier. That's all. That's it. That's the show. You're not allowed to get me anything else. And if you do, you're in trouble. Next question. Multi Beast asks, is there a difference between using a USB or analog microphone, assuming neither are cheap ones from the supermarket? Not really. <laughs> um, no, not really. That's, that's the answer to that. Um, there are good microphones in both categories. Most people stick with USB because it's just, it's, you know, they've got 37,000 USB ports and not every computer has uh, analog inputs uh, readily available. So the answer is no, not really. Most of the good ones I use are USB, uh, but there are lots of analog stuff that's just as fine. Um, the only time that you're going to go up and above and beyond and be super crazy baller is when you start getting into like phantom power, legit microphone status. And then yes. Yeah, then you're in then you're in a you're in a whole other level. You're god tier. Craig asks in eight times font. <laughs> fucking squint some shit to see the Howdy Adam. Oh howdy there, Craig. I was wondering what you suggest uh, for a person who has mediocre internet. I don't know what that means, but okay. Specific, uh, in specifics with chivalry medieval warfare, I can play games perfectly smooth, but as soon as I turn on OBS, I shoot up to 988 ping, and it doesn't change ever. Is this fixable? I'm going to guess, sir, that you are using or trying to use all of your upload for OBS. Um, not a good idea. Always give yourself lots of headroom. If you're playing a game that's online, Okay, never max it out, and if you're not maxing it out and you're still getting a higher ping, that's just because your ISP is saying, fuck you, that's why. Seriously, that's, that's it. Sometimes some lines just won't handle both of them, but it's more likely most times when people experience that because they're trying to push too much uh, through the streaming portion and not leaving enough overhead for the game itself to operate online. Okay? Next question from Ty. Hey, Novor, I don't have the best of monitors. It's 1280 by, 120, uh, by 1024. Hey, at one point in the world, that was a great monitor. But my computer is decent. An i5, a 650Ti, lots of RAM. So my question is, can your monitor be a hindrance towards your video quality? Or are there ways around your own relatively bad native resolution? When it comes to... Yeah, well, not really. I mean, honestly, 1280 by 1024 is essentially just a variant of 720p, right? Um, it's higher, technically, than 720p. And I think 1280 by 1024 might be 16 by 10. Either way, you don't need to worry about it. If you just stream at that quality, it's not the end of the world. People are going to be okay. It's, uh, you know, you could set a custom you know, resolution and try and downscale it, but I would just stream at that and leave it uh, as it is, not the end of the world. Uh, and when you eventually get a, uh, a different monitor, then you can get into the downscaling game, so on and so forth. Not a huge deal. Don't be worried about it. <laughs> Next question. With a random gift thing. I'm not even sure if that's... It's, it's like fucking French and German. I'm not even sure what the hell that's in. Anyway, hi there, Novel War. How do you have... Uh, how do you have to start streaming? Should it just be like playing a game 
uh, you like with, with commentary or just playing a game you're good at uh, or starting a game completely from the beginning what are the basics of a good live streamer should have I kind of covered that not um, not long ago so uh, do whatever you enjoy because that will come through beyond everything else do what you like to do when you enjoy doing it you'll talk a little more you'll also be better at it you also won't mind the streaming people will have a better time uh, whatever you do in whatever order doesn't much matter so long as you actually enjoy doing it doesn't matter if you start from the beginning of something to the end it's whatever um, people tend to like following things from the beginning and they because people enjoy a good story right so uh, it's good to start from the beginning of something if you're starting a new game, but that's what I would suggest to you. Do what you like to do, the rest of it comes easy. Okay, next question comes from a man, Josh. Says, I'm looking into updating my graphics card for streaming. Right now, I am running a 7870. It's a pretty decent card. And I'm looking at the newest generation of cards. Don't get the R series unless you plan on making breakfast on it. Uh, I'm not going to go nuts with this. Maximum budget of $400. Well, that's still a good chunk of change. And I've gotten the overhead. Uh, I've got the overhead to Crossfire the 7870s, which would be awesome. Would Crossfire or even having both graphics cards operate independently, one for streaming, one for playing, which isn't really a thing, be optimal? Or should I focus on upgrading my 3570K at 4.6? Uh, if your CPU is running at 4.6, even if it is a 3570K, uh, that's plenty fast for streaming. Um, that's ridiculous. You're good to go there. Uh, when it comes to your graphics card, it's going to do very little for you in terms of streaming performance. It's just going to change your gaming performance for the most part. Um, SLI and Crossfire both uh, have their complications. Um, so I'm always, you know hesitant in suggesting it i used to run sli back in the day it's gotten better but there's still a lot of complications that come with sli and crossfire uh i would just buy a single more powerful card if you're interested in upgrading however like i said it's not going to make a big difference for your streaming capabilities um so that's just a personal preference for you at that point um i don't think you need to change your cpu the only thing that you could go from from there would be a 3770 um for the cores, but you've got such a fast CPU that I doubt it's going to make an enormous difference. So, yeah, at that point, it's just you just have to ask yourself do I need a new graphics card because I want to run games smoother? If the answer is yes, grab a graphics card. If that means you want to crossfire and risk some of the complications that come along with it, we're good to go. What's the problem on the forum, Frenchie? Dare I ask? It's, it's fucking horrific. Also, it looks like YouTube is down, which is weird, possibly. That or the website is just not connecting to it. Nope, YouTube's down. All right. Um, yeah, no, don't worry about it. That's, that's YouTube is down. You're good. Thanks, Frenchie. Next question. How exactly does bitrate work? This comes from Fire Lord. Uh, and what is the average bitrate? And what is HD in terms of bitrate? Okay, well, um, bitrate is essentially just how much information you are giving uh, whatever streaming program you're, you're using to use to encode the video that you're trying to uh, to show people okay the more you give it the more accurate and one-to-one -one your video will be with the original uh, the original whatever you're you're capturing okay it's like a there's a curve to it um, Average bitrate is just essentially what it sounds like, right? Unless you're asking what the average bitrate for streaming is, which uh, I would say is between 1800 and 2400 for 720p anyway. And what is HD in terms of bitrate? I just answered your question. 
between 1800 and 2400 is a fairly decent average that people use. I go all the way up to Twitch's max because I use 60 frames a second and I want to give all the data I can, even though I'm compressing the shit out of it, still get artifacting. It's just the way life is. Um, HD in terms of bitrate, I mean, Blu-ray is what, 50 M megabit or something crazy like that? 30 for video, 20 for audio per second. Um, but in a live streaming world, 720p, 2 megabit per second, which is 2000 is fine. 1080p, honestly, and I know I get flack for this every time I'm in OBS's chat, 3500 is not enough for 1080, even at 30 frames a second. Um, below 5000, I notice pretty substantial drop-offs in quality. Um, but anyway, that's why that's why I chose to stick with 720p at 60 because I can, with encoding and compression, make my 720p stream look better in many scenarios than 1080p streams on Twitch right now, right? And Twitch does not allow higher than 3500 at this time, right? Okay. Well, that's why I say, Zai, is the, your mention of banning and stuff, that's why I say Twitch's max is 3,500. I'm uh, Whenever somebody asks me what to use for Twitch, it's because I don't want them to reduce what's available to them from Twitch, right? Because they start locking you out of things that they provide you or provide your stream or, you know, where they push your stream to, right? So that's why I always suggest don't go higher than 3,500. It's not because you can't stream more than that. It's just because it's, I don't suggest doing it for that, for that reason. Next question. It says, hey, Noah, this is from Matthew, uh, Matty. I don't, uh, Mathis or Matty or something. My God, that J is throwing me off and I'm not sure what European freaking got. No, I'm so sorry, bro. Hey Nova, I'm thinking of doing a SimCity stream on Twitch. I think I can get some viewers since I'm doing a guild for SimCity with 500 members. Any, any tips for quality of stream? SimCity is not an incredibly fast moving stream, okay? Kind of like Hearthstone. There's not a lot that's constantly you know, going on. It's not super fast motion. So if, my only suggestion to you is that if you're uh, and, all, and also, it doesn't matter if it's 60 frames a second necessarily because there's not a lot of really fast motion. So if um, if you are capable, 1080p at 30 frames a second, if you are also capable of giving it a good bitrate, would be a decent suggestion because it will be nice and crisp. SimCity has a lot of text, has a lot of small details that a 1080p you know because don't get me wrong 1080p 30 in motion at th when it's in motion with 3500 isn't that nice but if there's not a lot of motion then the fine details become nicer to look at you know text and so on and so forth so i would i would suggest that's that if you don't then my only suggestion is to um is to just use an encoding speed as slow as possible to get that text and get that those fine details as good as possible because you know but your problem that you're going to run into is that SimCity is a very CPU intensive game right so just be careful my tips are just be wary of how CPU intensive that game is and how you can tweak your stream in order to best conquer that excuse me Next question comes from David again. He said he has a final question. Will you do a video explaining how to fancy up your Twitch channel? Um, well, I don't need to do a video for it. Uh, when you're signed into Twitch, you can change over into administrator. And Twitch has reduced it down. There's not even HTML5 editing anymore. It's as simple as upload a picture, write in some text. Um, and they've got tutorials for that already on, on Twitch. So I don't need to do that. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, with the donation thing and, and stuff, that's all explained. Um, so it's pretty pretty easy to figure out. Uh, stronger emphasis on YouTube for a beginner? Nope, stick with streaming. 
smaller uh, smaller group of people that you have to worry about growing in, you know, big fish, small ponds to the small fish, big pond, uh, or go balls to the wall. Yeah. Use, use YouTube as a PVR, add some stuff specific to YouTube. If you're really worried about a growing YouTube channel and push people from Twitch to YouTube, and then you can do the reverse if YouTube takes off. That's my suggestion to you. Mr. Joseph says, I just started streaming since I got my new graphics card, and I'm wondering if I should have an overlay. I feel like most good streamers do, uh, and I would like to be successful with this someday. And if I do uh, want one, may I ask you who made yours? Uh, the overlay, I'm assuming you mean like my webcam overlay or my break, you know, my my uh, commercial break overlay and stuff. A buddy of mine, a uh, good friend of Like TV now, Jason did it. I did all my overlays previously. It's, you know, if you have GIMP or some version of Photoshop and stuff, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be super fancy. Um, you just kind of have to, you know, hack some stuff together. Uh, it is nice to have. It adds a little something, something to the to the channel, right? It makes it look more professional. So, yes, I suggest having overlays sometimes, but uh, yes. Next question comes from Tristan. Again, since my last question about the Avermedia card, uh, would I need a computer just as good as mine or half decent as a second PC? Or could I take the older parts that I have, uh, like a Pentium dual core, and use that? Would I also need a graphics card for it? Thank you. Uh, don't use an Intel Pentium. No, you don't need a graphics card. Uh, because all you're doing, right, is it's taking the feed from your main computer and sending it right to OBS, and OBS is streaming it. So you just need a good CPU. That's it. Uh, my streaming computer has a 3770 in it. Um, that will do 90% of what you need it to do. If you or 99%, if you want to be the crazy bastards and go and spend $900 on an epic hexacore uh, or like some high-end nine series monster that can be overclocked to high hell so that you can use the medium to slow presets, go nuts. Not necessary. But go nuts. But yes, all you need is a good CPU. I would suggest uh, if you can pick up a 2600K uh, secondhand and put a board together and stuff, you know, you could do that. Or a 3770K. I have mine in a tiny little tower, right? Like mine's in a mine's a mini ITX build. It's only like this big. Cost me 1,100 bucks. A lot of that was the case because a good mini ITX case is actually kind of expensive. And that was it. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, it's, you, you know, you put the Aver Media card in there, you put the CPU in there, you don't need a sound card or anything, you're just one into the other. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> when are we having an X264 study group? <laughs> Fucking A. I know you love relearning it, so it's so fun. Yeah, you nailed that on the head. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is, yeah. Nope. Uh, I have, uh, Miko says, I have a problem with something snapping. What in the sweet fuck? This is, <laughs> that is a new computer question. Go find a doctor, you fucking egg. All right. Oh, uh, Simon has a question. Not that sign, different sign. Do you know common page maybe on Twitch about which games are not allowed to get streamed? And I guess you uh, recommend a second computer with a better CPU and capture card for uh, as a streaming computer instead of using everything on the same computer. Is that correct? If you can afford it and you're really hardcore into streaming, yes, it is not necessary. You can just build one really beefy computer and do most of what you're going to want to do. It really comes down to are you okay with maybe not getting 100% performance out of your computer for gaming. If you want it to be that way with every game you play, then yeah, you're going to probably need a second computer to stream with. Um, it's not a necessity. It is uh, just something that can be used to increase your experience and the viewer's experience. Uh, but I, it's not necessary. Not necessary. 
Uh, but when it comes to the games not allowed to be streamed on Twitch, I don't know if there's one that exists. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you're not you're not about to be streaming rape play, I would assume. Um, you know, super. But I haven't heard of anybody getting nailed for a game that they're playing specifically. You know, you're not supposed to be. You're not technically supposed to play ROMs. You're not uh, technically supposed to be playing. Um, you know, stuff like that. anything illegal. It's pretty straightforward. Is it, the check mark or the check box should be? Is it uh, illegal? If it's no, then you're good. And if it is not like a like a friggin' harem sex game, then you're probably also safe. That's that's it. That is it. Um, and streaming, yeah. Well, you're not allowed. That's not a game, but you're not allowed to stream somebody else's stream technically, and you're not allowed to, you know. Yes, that's that's the show. That was the last question. That's it. That's it, ladies. That is the show. Never mind. I've got one more from uh, to follow up. And that's and this is going to be it because I've been. This has now been a three and a half hour tutorial, uh, or three hour tutorial. Would it be needed for the SimCity thing uh, to have an overlay for the streaming? Um, not necessary, but depending on what you're displaying on the overlay, like I said, always a good thing. Uh, a webcam. Recommend using it. Absolutely. People love seeing faces. Go nuts. Make an overlay for your webcam if you're going to have an, a webcam on uh, over top of gameplay. There you go. That is it. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our, uh, our live streaming tutorial and question and answer. Uh, I'm going to try and get all this up on YouTube. I will have have this highlighted as well here for Twitch for future referencing. Um, I can do this again in the future, um, but this should answer many questions for many people. So, boom! Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Hopefully, I answered uh, pretty much all the questions that you needed to hear. And that's going to be it for that.